I haven't had these in so long. Oh my God. Oh, we're definitely talking about this day. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, I'll be talking about Trisha Paytas's What I Eat on a Binge video. I know we said we're not gonna do trigger warnings anymore, but I do have to give a trigger warning here because we are talking about binging and we are going to watch a video of someone binging. So please skip this video if it's triggering to you. Also check out my description for my free Hunger Crush and Combo ebook for some healthy meal and snack ideas. And excuse my voice, I'm trying here, but I got laryngitis for my kids again. Okay, I'm just gonna jump in here and we can kind of explain things as we go. And a reminder to please keep it kind in the comments, both in my video and on Trisha's. We do try to keep this a supportive place, especially for those sharing their experiences with EDs. I have borderline personality disorder and I have to recognize triggers because I have emotional um, instability. It's like really hard for me to regulate my emotions. I have to recognize trigger as well. A big trigger for me is actually like going into the grocery store. So as Trisha mentioned, she has BPD or borderline personality disorder, which actually actually is what my psychologist sister, Dr. Sky Fitzpatrick specializes in. So I threw a few questions her way. So Sky echoed that binge eating disorder and borderline personality disorder are highly comorbid, largely related to this emotion dysfunction piece that Trisha described. There are a lot of pathways to binge eating, but some researchers have hypothesized a model where individuals who have low self-esteem are predisposed to binge eat. And when a negative self-belief is triggered, that person understandably feels a lot of anxiety and stress. Folks who have difficulty with emotional regulation, like those with BPD, are just completely intolerant to these negative emotions and will do anything to try to distract themselves from them. Some do this through self-harm, others through impulsive shopping, and others by restricting their diet while engaging in more negative self-eating beliefs, which then triggers a binge. So the disordered eating serves as a temporary false sense of emotional control, which ultimately obviously is very maladaptive. So being in a grocery store or a certain fast food chain can be a big trigger for a lot of folks with binge eating disorder if that is where a lot of their fear foods had traditionally become consumed. As Sky told me, the ultimate end goal would be to confront rather than to avoid those triggers, but this is a really long game for a lot of folks. Now, the other major trigger for binging, however, that we can and probably should avoid is dieting. My mindset this week was like, I need to start dieting. Like I want to start dieting. I want to start losing weight. Um, Cause like for a number of reasons, I just want to look better. I obviously am trying to get pregnant again. And so because I've like put that diet word in my head, like I'm like restricting myself. I kind of went on a binge shopping. Like I got these for my daughter, but um, like I hadn't gone in there and so long I need to lose weight. But then like, I'm like, okay, this is my last like little binge before I, I go hardcore next week. Cause next week I'm filming a lot. So I'm like, you know what? Next week I'll probably have really small dinners and I won't be stacking. So let me just this week go like ham. And I think that's like, that's where like, it's a mental thing. Bingo. We know that one of the biggest predictors of a binge is restriction. Our bodies are biologically primed to defend our weight when faced with a diet, or in this case, even the anticipation of a diet. We typically call this the Last Supper Syndrome, and it's an actual psychological phenomenon. One study found that when restrained eaters, AKA folks who have historically dieted, were told that they were going to begin a week long, low calorie diet after participating in a cookie tasting task, they ate significantly more cookies than those who were not told about the upcoming diet. Once you get into this binge restrict cycle, it is really, really hard to get off that ride. When we restrict our food intake, our hypothalamus tells our brain to ramp up metabolic efficiency and force us to eat more. We get anxious, our cortisol rises, we get hungry, and we specifically start to crave high calorie foods. This phenomenon isn't unique to folks with binge eating disorder or borderline personality disorder, or folks with a history of dieting or some kind of lack of willpower. This is a primal human survival mechanism and is really in all of us. It's just that for folks with borderline personality disorder, this impulse is driven by this desperate attempt to regulate dysfunctional emotions. Let me hop in here quick to chat soup season because I partnered up with Emmy Ramen for today's video. And if you are a noodle lover, you're gonna wanna try this. So like most kids, there was a good chunk of my life growing up where I basically lived off packets of ramen noodles. They're cheap, they're delicious, they take zero skill to prepare. But generally speaking, they're not super nutritious 
or very satiating. But Emmy ramen noodles kind of blew my mind. Each packet has 22 grams of protein and 18 grams of fiber. So they keep you full longer while stabilizing energy levels. These are great if you need a really fast meal under seven minutes, or if you're trying to better manage your blood sugars and insulin levels. These are made with pumpkin seed protein. And despite offering six different meaty flavors like black garlic chicken and spicy beef, they are all 100% plant-based. And of course you can add whatever toppings you like. So I often throw in whatever veggies I've got in the fridge. Sometimes I throw a fried egg on top or some leftover chicken or shrimp. But in a pinch, they're also super satiating on their own. My favorite is the spicy red miso, but they offer variety packs so that you can try them all. So if you want to try with Emmy ramen yourselves, go to emmyeats.com slash abbysharp to get 15% off of your order. That's emmyeats.com slash abbysharp for 15% off. And if you are not completely obsessed, you can get a 30 day money back guarantee. But let me know in the comments, which flavor is your fave? I don't know. Like, I think this is like a part of my life that I don't share because I feel like I am so spiritual and I'm in so much control of like my emotions and how I react. And I've like really gained control of like that aspect of my life, gained control of spending, gained control of like not picking fights for like knowing what love. Like I really feel like I gained control in so many aspects of my life that I like almost feel embarrassed that I don't have control of this because like even when I was shooting a documentary, we did a whole like food segment and he's like, okay, if you can manifest everything, you know, which I feel like I can. He's like, why can't you manifest like, and not, he wasn't like insensitive or anything like that. It's just more like, why can't you manifest like eating control, better eating habits, like being skinny, being healthy. And that's a really good question. And I don't know, my mind is just like not quite there yet. Like, here's the thing. I don't have to hide my food with my husband. Like I bring this back. Like it's, it's not an issue. Like I told him like verbally, I was going to go on a diet. Like I wanted to lose weight and I rarely do that because like if this happens, like I don't want to be judged. Yeah, my husband sees all my videos. It's not me like hiding it. Um, I know a lot of us are like, we used to hide food. Like a lot of people who have binge eating disorder, especially like fat people with eating disorders, like we hide our food, hence why we binge, hence why, and I used to do it. Shame and embarrassment are such integral drivers of eating disorders, which is why they often go so underdiagnosed, undertreated, and in way too many cases, even celebrated. In the eyes of the public, eating disorders often are associated with vanity, low self-esteem, and weakness. And within the ED world, binge eating is seen as particularly shameful, where anorexia is marked with extreme discipline binge eating is often seen as lacking self-control. It is the ultimate blow to one's self-character, especially when you're also fat. So it's no wonder that most binging and purging happens in secret. The world is already super unkind to fat people, especially fat people who aren't actively doing everything possible to lose weight. But they can be extra unkind to fat people who say they want to lose weight and then bring home bags of chips and ice cream from the store. So I can really empathize with that shame that comes along with feeling like you failed before you even started and the bravery it must take to open yourself up to that criticism. So I really applaud this openness and honesty because you know shame is actually the fuel that keeps the binge restrict cycle alive. You restrict, your cravings increase, you binge, you feel guilt and shame, rinse and repeat. We have to intercept the cycle somewhere. And while the obvious place to do that damage would be right here at restriction, shutting down the guilt and shame can also weaken the beast. As Brene Brown says, shame cannot survive being spoken. I got, I went down the chip aisle, I got cake pod chips. I got baked potatoes. I, um, I gotta get the Similac formula. I also got Rocky Road ice cream, which clearly I can't eat in the car. I mean, maybe I could figure out a way to do it. Look, it's four items, like a binge kind of. Cause like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna taste all of these. I'm gonna share my thoughts on whether or not this is a binge after we get through the eating episode. I, I do better where it's like, I will eat breakfast. I won't like, I, so I do have binge eating disorder. And if I would binge like this, I would just eat and eat and eat and then like not eat for a couple days. I will eat tomorrow and I will get back on track. Like the longest a binge has been for me now is like this, it's like in a sitting. Okay, this is a huge, huge step in the right direction. And yes, having breakfast and regular meals to follow a binge is so important if we wanna weaken the momentum of that cycle. Often folks with binge eating disorder will start with one bad food in a day and then be unable to stop until they are physically sick, fall asleep or both. Then the following day, that guilt and shame fuels them to tighten the reins even further, sometimes abstaining from eating anything at all, which only throws them into another binge. 
If you struggle with binge eating episodes and you are entering a scenario where you feel that you may be at risk. So for example, a lot of folks feel that way around the holidays. The most important thing that you can do leading up to that triggering scenario is to eat normally. Normal breakfast, normal lunch, maybe a normal dinner, depending on the situation. Your brain cannot be expected to not overcome these intense cravings when it is underfueled. And even if you do overindulge, like so many of us will during the holidays, eating a normal meal the next day Day, even if you're not particularly that hungry, can be imperative to nipping that cycle in the bud. And truly, the older I get, truly, grease upsets my stomach so much. I guess I'll still have fast food like when I film. I never eat fast food personally. Well, it's summertime, lunches here and there, but the like, pool days will take to play to the pool. But normally I don't, like normally we don't, and I don't prefer it. So this really speaks to the real growth in Trisha's journey. When you're really in the throes of binge eating disorder, you can find yourself unable to stop eating food you don't even like. When we constantly override our body's innate wisdom, we disrupt our physical and psychological tools for detecting satiety, satisfaction, hunger, likes, dislikes, etc. Literally any and all input from our brain and body. But it sounds like with the work that she's put in, Trisha has collected some data on how foods actually make her feel. Fast food upsets her stomach and she doesn't even particularly like it, so she doesn't eat it when she's not filming for work. I still don't understand the whole mukbang genre, especially if you don't even like these foods, but we covered that in more detail already. When you're fat or when you're older or whatever, like people are like, especially binge eating disorder, people really think it's like an excuse for you to just like shove your face. Um, and like it is, it's an addiction. Like it's something where I like really saw these things and like, I need to eat that. I almost opened the bag in the store if I was pregnant, I would have done that all day long. And like ironically enough, when I was pregnant, I did not snack that much and I wasn't like hungry like this. I didn't have addictions. It was very weird. Like you get supposed to you get pregnancy cravings. I didn't get any pregnancy cravings. That was the opposite. Like I just didn't even want to eat like towards the end. Like it was very odd. <laughs> like I just didn't eat a lot. Anyways, like I said, I feel not too bad. I feel like this is something that I don't do very often and I don't go to the stores for this reason. So the jury's actually still out on whether or not binge eating disorder is an addiction, especially since food addiction is not yet an official mental health diagnosis. One review of the literature found that patients with binge eating disorder tend to overeat to deal with emotional dysregulation rather than for hedonic experiences of any one specific substance or taste, the latter of which is more characteristic of food addiction. That said, it makes total sense that Trisha may feel addicted to the ritual of binging. So in other words, that it's something that she wants to stop, but she feels like she's out of control and just can't. And again, that often comes down to weakening one or more of the links in the binge restrict chain. Yeah, I don't feel like too bad after this binge. I feel like I don't feel like, you know, it yet. So yeah, I mean, four items, four items isn't like bad. They're kind of all mixed together. And I did have sweets before dinner. So I feel like it is going to ruin my dinner a little bit. Um, but it is what it is. Okay, so I promised I would talk about if this is a binge. And to do that, I will just give a recap of what she ate. I didn't show the entire eating episode, but she ate a couple small handfuls of each of the chips and Muddy Buddies and two fudge cookies. Now, the official description of a binge in the context of binging disorder requires three or more of the following behaviors. Eating more rapidly than normal, eating until uncomfortably full, eating large amounts of food even when not hungry, eating alone because of the embarrassment, and feeling disgusted with oneself, depressed, or guilty guilty after eating. Now, based on everything we just saw here, Trisha didn't eat until she was sick. Trisha didn't finish all of the snacks she bought. Trisha ate alone in her car, but actually not alone since over 200,000 people watched her do it. And Trisha said that she doesn't feel too bad. So based on that, one might actually say officially that this was not a binge, but a lot of disordered eating comes down to intention. And it was clear that Trisha's intention was to eat as many bad foods as she could before she started her diet next week. She was kicking off the binge restrict cycle. So if Trisha feels this is a binge, then it's a binge. The feelings associated with a binge may be similar while the foods or amount may vary. But semantics aside, it's clear that Trisha has made some serious progress on her journey. And I really do appreciate her open in sharing the ups and downs, because that is generally what eating disorder recovery looks like. It is almost never linear or predictable. But on that note, let's keep it kind and supportive in the comments on Trisha's video here. That is all that I have for you guys today. If you liked it, be sure to give it the thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.